Welcome to Read Aloud with Mr. Paul. I'm so glad you could be here. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a single story. Today we'll be reading Waiting for the Biblioburro by Monica Brown. Illustrations by John Potter. Waiting for the Biblioburro by Monica Brown. Illustrations by John Parra. On a hill behind a tree, there is a house. In the house, there is a bed. And on the bed, there is a little girl named Anna, fast asleep, dreaming about the world outside and beyond the hill. When Anna wakes up to the roosters, kee kitty kee Poppy is already at work on the farm, and Mommy is busy in the garden. Anna bathes her little brother and feeds the goats and collects the eggs to sell at the market. After breakfast, Anna and her mother walk down the hill. Anna closes her eyes against the sun and wishes she was back in the cool of the house with her libro, her book. Anna has read her book, her only book, so many times she knows it by heart. The book was a gift from her teacher for working so hard on her reading and writing. But last fall, her teacher moved far away, and now there is no one to teach Anna and the other children in her village. So, at night, on her bed in the house on the hill, Anna makes up her own cuentos and tells the stories to her little brother to help him fall asleep. She tells him stories about make-believe creatures that live in the forest and the mountains and the sea. She wishes for new stories to read, but her teacher with the books has gone. One morning, Anna wakes up to the sounds of tuck tuck clip-clop, and a loud ee ee when Anna looks down the hill below her house, she sees a man with a sign that reads Biblio Burro. With the man, there are two burros. What are they carrying? Libros! Books! Anna runs down the hill to the man with the sign and the burros and the books. Other children run to him too, skipping down hills and stomping through the fields. Who are you? Who are they? The children ask. The man says, I am a librarian, a bibliotecario, and these are my burros, Alpha and Beto. Welcome to the Biblioburro, my biblioteca. But, senor, Anna says, I thought libraries were only in big cities and buildings. Not this one says the librarian. This is a moving library. Then he spreads out his books and invites the children to join him under a tree. Once upon a time, the librarian begins, sharing the story of an elephant who swings from a spider's web. He reads from books with beautiful pictures, then helps the little ones learn their abecedario. He sings, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Finally, he says, Now it's your turn. Pick out books, and in a few weeks I will be back to collect them and bring you new ones. Me too? asks Anna. Especially you, says the librarian with a smile. So many cuentos! While Alpha and Beto chomp the sweet grass under the tree, Anna picks up book after book and finds pink dolphins and blue butterflies, castles and fairies, talking lions and magic carpets. Someone should write a story about your burros, Anna tells the librarian, rubbing Alpha's nose and feeding more grass to Beto. Why don't you? he asks. Then he packs up the books and is off. Enjoy, he calls to the children. 
I will be back. Anna runs up the hill to her house, hugging the books to her chest. She can't wait to share her books with her brother, and that night she reads until she can't keep her eyes open any longer. Each morning, Anna does her chores and reads and looks out her window. She listens for the sounds of Alpha and Beto, but weeks pass and the librarian doesn't return. Lunes, first. Martes, second. Miércoles, jueves, viernes. Fifth, sábado. Sixth, seventeenth. Domingo, twenty-first. When will he come back? She asks her mother, who smiles and says, Go read, Anna. When will he come back? She asks her mother, who smiles and says, Go draw, Anna. When will he come back? She asks her mother, who smiles and says, Go write, Anna. When will he come back? She asks her mother, who finally says, Go to bed, Anna. Había una vez, once upon a time. One night, Anna dreams she is flying over her country on a butterfly's back. In her dream, she crosses mountains and oceans and rivers and jungles, bringing stories everywhere she goes. Stories fly from her mouth and fingers like magic, falling into the hands of the children waiting below. When Anna wakes up, she misses Alpha and Beto and the Biblioburro's books. She remembers that the librarian told her that she could write a book, and so, with paper and string and colored pencils, she does. Finally, just when Anna thinks she'll never see the Biblioburro again, she wakes up to ee -ah, ee -ah, and children yelling. She runs down the hill with her library books and a special surprise of her very own. I wrote this cuento for you, she says. Que bueno, the librarian says, and then he reads her story to the children under the tree. When it's time to go, Anna's book is packed carefully on the burro's back, ready to be carried away, over the hills and through the fields, to another child who is... asleep on a bed, in a house, on a hill behind a tree, dreaming of Alpha and Beto and all the new stories the Biblio Burro will bring. Thank you so much for joining me for Read Aloud with Mr. Paul. Until next time, discover the wonder in a book. Pick one up. Take a look. For more heartwarming stories, like and subscribe to Read Aloud with Mr. Paul. Thanks again.